Indiana star Malik Renew can have another career day against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in. It is the Locked on Hoosiers podcast. I'm your man, Jacob Goins. I appreciate you making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen each and every day. We're a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, which is your team every single day. Reminder, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this show, being a part of this community, a part of this family. We are growing, growing, and growing. And so if you're on YouTube, like the video, hit the subscribe button. It's free. That's all you got to do. It doesn't make you pay anything. All it does is help you and it helps me. Okay. So help us out. Do that for me. If you're on any of your audio platforming uh, profiles and uh, platforms, that's the word I'm looking for. If you're on any of your audio platforms, uh, be sure you can subscribe on there as well. Turn on notifications across the board so you know when we post new episodes. Malik Renew for Indiana basketball can have another career day against the Nebraska Cornhuskers tonight when Indiana goes on the road. That's what we're talking about today. That is what I believe. I believe that. I believe that Malik Renew can have another career day in points against the Cornhuskers. We're going to talk all about that. We're going to break down this game for you. Also get into the latest bracketology as of yesterday. That's what you can expect here on today's episode of Locked on Hoosiers. The Hoosiers of Indiana and head coach Mike Woodson going on the road for just the second time this year in a true road game and doing so in their second road Big Ten game. We remember... Seems like forever ago that this team went to Michigan, right? They went to Michigan and took care of business. It was a tough game, no doubt about it. It was a tough game. And while Michigan may not be the best, right? They may not be the best thing in the Big Ten. This team went on the road and got that win. And as we get back into conference play, this is when the season really begins. You've got all your non-conference games done out of the way, you don't have to worry about him anymore. And the Hoosiers went 10 and 3. And, and that includes the two wins. So I guess you went technically, what, 8 and 3 in non conference play. And it, it wasn't anything spectacular. You beat the teams you were supposed to, and you lost to the teams that you were supposed to, right? That you were not favored against. And so that's in the past. We're not worried about that anymore. We're worried about the Big Ten play because this is when the season is won and lost. And that begins tonight with Big Ten play picking back up. The Hoosiers are 2-0 and thanks to a couple of wins over Maryland and Michigan. And now you go on the road to take on this Nebraska team, who is 11-2. and We kind of mentioned this in the episode yesterday uh, briefly, but of course a full preview episode for you here today. This is a Nebraska team that's 11-2 and two overall, and they do have a loss in the Big Ten already. They lost on the road to Minnesota, and then they turned around and they beat Michigan State 77-70. to 70. They also have a loss 89-60 to 60 against what was a top 15 Creighton team at the time, so a big almost 30-point loss against Creighton. But since those back-to-back losses to Creighton and Minnesota, the win against Michigan State, like I mentioned, they have a nice non-conference win over Kansas State on the road, by the way, then beat North Dakota and South Carolina State, and they welcome in the Indiana Hoosiers. This is a good Nebraska team. They're talented. They're very, very talented. But something that I've seen a lot of Indiana fans already talking about, how far can you judge this Nebraska team, right? How how much can you take what they've done and, and use it as evidence or and tell how good this team really is? I mean, their strength of schedule is it's terrible for, for Nebraska. I mean, they just haven't played all that crazy good of teams. And the one team, the one good team they did play, they got killed. They got crushed. So... Overall, I don't know. 
I mean, I've watched some of the games and the film from this team, and they're talented. They can shoot the ball, and they've got some size, but they've also got some injury problems. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for this Nebraska team as a whole. You look at some of their leading scores. You have very, very balanced offensively. Four guys scoring in double figures. Bryce Williams at 13.7. You have Jawan Gary at 13.3. You have uh, Rink Mast, the forward, who we're going to talk about in just a second. Mast is averaging 13 points a game. And then uh, you have uh, Tommy Naga, who is averaging almost 13 points a game. So, that's pretty balanced. I mean, four guys that are averaging 13 or more points, that's a big deal. Here's why I say Malik Renew offensively can have a career night tonight. Rick Mass, their tallest player for Nebraska, has undergone knee surgery, okay? He underwent knee surgery. He's from the Netherlands, underwent knee surgery, and his status is questionable. Their head coach was on record uh, on a podcast saying that uh, he would be ready by early January, but they didn't know if that meant the Indiana game or not. And as far as we know, as of the time of this recording, we don't know the status of him. We don't know what he's going to do or if he's going to be ready to play in this game. And if he does, what is his percentage level, right? What's his percentage level offensively? And defensively, he's six foot 10, 248 pounds. He's the tallest guy that plays. He is the biggest threat to Malik Renu and Khalil Ware and really McKenzie and Baco, which, by the way, he was just named the Big Ten freshman of the week. So shout out to McKenzie and Baco, who had that uh, happening this year, right after the rougher start for him. So all of that coming together to say this this is Malik Renu's game right here. He just did it the other night. He's done it already. He has two or three games where he's broken his career record in points already. Why not do it in this game? And if you're Mike Woodson and this coaching staff and you're this Indiana basketball team, if Nebraska proves early that they cannot stop Malik Renew, give him the ball. Give him the ball because he's proven he can do it. He's proven that he is your go-to guy as of right now. It was Khalil Ware a while back early on in the season. And it's been Malik Renew here as of late. I mean, he's your leading scorer at 16 points a game. And man, when he gets on a roll, he gets on an absolute freaking roll. I mean, had 37 minutes, 34 points in those 37 minutes the other night. Shot 68% against Kennesaw State. Heck, even shot 33% from downtown and had 11 rebounds. A walking double-double. And I know I talked about that with Khalil Ware. But man, I love to see that with Malik Renew. And I think that should allow him to grab defensive rebounds and offensive rebounds. And that is why I think Malik Renu can already jump ahead and double down back-to-back performances with career high in points. Now, 34 is going to be hard to beat. But if there's a time to do it, it's when a team like Nebraska, who their best player, their tallest player, their leading rebounder, one of their leading scorers, may or may not play. And if Indiana can get another 34-piece out of Malik Renu, you better believe they've got a good chance to go on the road and beat this Nebraska team. Well, coming up here on Locked on Hoosiers, we'll talk about some more keys to the game. How can Indiana go on the road and get another victory and try to start out 3-0 in Big Ten play? We'll talk about that coming up in just a second here on Locked on Hoosiers. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. At the start of the new year, every small business owner is asking themselves the same question. What's the one move that I can make that'll take my business to the next level in 2024? LinkedIn Jobs knows that your success all depends on the team you surround yourself with. That's why LinkedIn Jobs has created the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn has been very successful for me personally, for my company that I work for. I tell you this all the time. We use LinkedIn. I use LinkedIn to hire other people. It's the first place I go when we have to fill a spot. It's easy, it's fast, and it's free if you're looking to post a job. And I've used it to find other people for our jobs. It really is incredible and how easy it is to use LinkedIn jobs. It's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. 
and in 2024, it's time to uh, achieve those those goals, have those New Year's resolutions, right? And if you have the right team, the right people in place using LinkedIn Jobs, you're going to get all of that, and you're going to have the best year for your business in 2024. That it's just it's a given. That's what you have to do, and LinkedIn Jobs is here to help you with that. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back into Locked On Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every single day. We're having a lot of fun over here previewing Indiana and Nebraska back into Big Ten play start of 2024. This is when the season gets to be a lot of fun. When you've got Big Ten play going on, you have SEC play going on, you've got Big East play, my second favorite conference. You know that here. I love the Big East outside of the Big Ten. But all these games are just so Good. And this is when we have two and three games a week, right? You've got this Tuesday, Wednesday game, and then you have that Saturday, Sunday game. And it really is just so much fun. It's going to fly by. Just be ready for it. It's going to fly by just like football season did. Basketball season will do the same thing. So let's try to enjoy it while we're here, huh? Indiana on the road tonight at Nebraska. Some keys to the game. I talked about how Malik Renu should and could and I hope does I think will have another career night tonight against Nebraska unless they find a way to just absolutely shut him down which could be the case right you got a guy coming off a 34 point performance you probably have a game plan for him what does that mean that means Khalil Ware could step up and be your guy or it could be it could be your Big Ten Freshman of the Week. It could be McKenzie Mbaco, who has had just a really steady run, man. That is what really excites me about McKenzie Mbaco is the fact that he is your guy to just look at and, and really be proud of. Another 14-point performance the other night, and um, he had fourteen, just 14 minutes, but 14 points in those 14 minutes. Five of seven from the floor. Four of five from downtown. That's what you love to see on those 14 points. Also had six rebounds and three assists. Uh, had a couple of turnovers and some fouls, but whatever, right? McKenzie and Baco has been playing consistent basketball. And so if it does, in fact, happen where Malik Renew gets double teamed when he gets the ball inside or whatever... I look for McKenzie and Baco to be that guy to step up offensively. And if Indiana can go out and continue to, I don't think they put up another hundred piece, but scoring in the eighties is a must for this team. They don't want to at times, but there's some big 10 teams that can play. And we know what big 10 basketball is, right? We know it's, it is physical, slow, defensive. Indiana can't do that. That's not Indiana's strengths offensively. They, when the longer Indiana takes, typically the worse it goes. And so I look for, I say this all the time, I look for pace, I look for turnovers, I look for quick quality shots. If Indiana can work that around and get those, then you're in you're in a good position. And looking at the other side of things defensively, Indiana and and, and I look at a guy like Trey Galloway, Going to have a, a tough defensive matchup with Bryce Williams, who uh, was a former All-American when he was at Charlotte. He is uh, six foot seven. He can rebound. He's big inside, but he also shoots almost 35% from outside as a six foot seven guy. Indiana's got a couple of those that they're trying to develop, right? We know how tough that is. And he's their leading scorer at 14 points a game. So, Who's going to guard him? Is it going to be Trey Galloway? Is it going to be McKenzie and Baco? Is it going to be maybe a combination of guys? We're going to find out. But regardless, you have to find him. You have to find him, and you have to know he can shoot, he can rebound, he can do a, a lot of things really, really well. And we understand that Indiana likes to give up threes at times, but Nebraska will take them. And I wouldn't say that they are just a killer three-point shooting team um, as a whole. They're they're decent. I had it pulled up. I'm gonna. It's 33 percent as a team, so average basically. But they take a lot of them. So if Indiana wants to give them up, that's fine. 
and we know they will, they're going to give up some, but they have guys that can make them. They don't have any 40.3 point shooters. They have a couple that are close, but um, other than that, I think Nebraska is going to run. I think Nebraska is going to give you everything you have. I just look more offensively for Indiana. That's my biggest key is just score. Keep scoring. Defense will be there at times. That's the thing people always say in basketball, right? Defense travels, especially on the road. It's the offense that you have to get kind of generated and what should be a pretty good crowd tonight in Nebraska uh, for a big matchup. They've got a lot of hype, a lot of things going for them. 11 wins already on the season, and you've got a big name brand of Indiana coming to town. It should be a hostile environment. And I think Indiana fans should have confidence given what this team did the last time they went on the road at Michigan wasn't a hostile environment by any means. It was a half empty arena, which was kind of depressing, but they went out and got a gritty win. And I will be honest here. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. I am a little concerned on the start for this game because Indiana's last three games just haven't been all that crazy, right? They've been three non-conference opponents where they did what they were supposed to do. They didn't have to just compete and fight and and earn 40 total minutes of basketball for the win, right? They kind of just walked in and did their thing and let talent win the basketball games, thanks to career nights from Malik Renew. So is this team ready? Are they prepared? Are they hungry? Are they motivated? Are they prepared enough with a game plan for Nebraska? Do they get punched in the mouth early like they have in multiple of multiple games this season? Do they allow big runs like they have against Auburn, right, in UConn when they hang around for a minute and then let them go? Or do they come out playing really well like they have the last couple of games, maybe hit some threes like they did the other night to start the game and kind of get away from it, right? Because I think Indiana's the better team. I mean, I don't I don't think that's a, a doubt anywhere in my mind. And, and I think a lot of you – feel the same way and I think a lot of people outside looking in on this game would think the same thing that Indiana's the better team here you just got to go on the road in the Big Ten which is never easy my keys to victory here feed Malik Renew get some help from McKenzie and Baco Trey Galloway some guys off the bench and get some stops and rebounds yeah, I, I think it's that simple. I really do. I think it's more about the offense in this game tonight than it is defensively because I think Indiana's defense will be there. I think their height is really going to bother Nebraska. And if the Hoosiers can shoot well, get it inside, make some free throws and rebound the basketball, Hoosiers are going to be fine, and they'll be 3-0 and in Big Ten play. Well, coming up here on Locked on Hoosiers, we'll take a look at the latest bracketology. Came out yesterday. It comes out once a week, but now the conference play rolling around. It's going to start coming out twice a week, and we'll talk about it here on the show. Indiana at an interesting spot. Haven't moved a whole lot, but some interesting matchups and potential around the conference and the country. We'll talk about that coming up in just a second here on Locked on Hoosiers. Welcome back into Locked on Hoosiers. I appreciate you making this your first listen each and every day. Reminder, we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. want to remind you that Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. If you haven't checked out Locked On Sports Today on YouTube, what are you doing? I've been telling you about it. It is awesome. I check it out literally every day. I don't stay on it all the time. I got got a job and, and some stuff going on, but I check it out at least once a day, if not multiple times a day, and it's always something different. It's a different show. It's a different league. It's a different host and personality, and that's my favorite part about it. So if you're on YouTube right now, or if you're not, go to YouTube, type in Locked On Sports today, and drop them a free subscription. They would greatly appreciate it. It's a really, really neat thing that we're doing here on Locked On and the Locked On Podcast Network. So go check it out, Locked On Sports Today, and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Well, let's take a look at the latest bracketology on ESPN from Joe Lenardi. Again, this is released every week, once a week right now here through this. uh, It has been, I guess, through this non-conference schedule, but 
Now that we're into conference play, he'll release it twice a week. And I'm not sure if we'll do it twice a week here, probably just once a week here on the show, but some really interesting tidbits here, including the opponent that Indiana plays tonight. So that's what's really interesting about this. Looking at Bracketology, again, this was updated yesterday uh, by Joe Lenardi at ESPN. Top overall seed is Purdue. First team out is Butler. Last team in, you guessed it, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. How interesting is that? There's a long season. I say this all the time. Long season to go, but Nebraska's already right there on the fringe and a win over Indiana, who is still slated as a tournament team, would bump them in to the NCAA tournament for sure. Last four buys here, the team's on the bubble right now for the NCAA tournament, as we are, what, about two and a half months away from Selection Sunday. Last four buys, Northwestern, South Carolina, of course, Northwestern out of the Big Ten, a team that Indiana will see this season. South Carolina, Florida, a couple of SEC teams, and Virginia out of the ACC. Your last four in, Texas, which is kind of crazy. I thought they'd be better than this by now. But New Mexico, Utah State, and then Nebraska, as we mentioned. So they are the last team in the tournament as of right now for bracketology. And look, here's the thing. When it comes to Indiana, right, we've talked about a lot of those other games when I did the five most important games on yesterday's episode. If you missed it, go check it out. This could end up being a tournament win for Indiana, a tournament team win, right? If Nebraska continues to win after this game, because Indiana's going to win, I think. But if Nebraska gets this schedule and continues a magical season it's best season they've had a best start they've had in a long time but if they continue to win some games and sneak their way into the tournament then that looks better for indiana and their resume if they win so beat nebraska tonight and then cheer for nebraska if you're indiana first four out butler kansas state tcu and texas tech there's some big names there in those first four out next four out cincinnati Washington, St. John's, and Oregon. So some really big names on the bubble right now for the NCAA tournament. Your conference breakdown, SEC still leading the way with nine, but the Big Ten not far behind with eight teams of their own. Big 12 with seven, Big East five, and the rest uh, four and under. I mentioned Purdue already as the uh, number one seed in the NCAA tournament right now. Uh, you look at some teams kind of that Indiana has played. Indiana will be playing um, teams from the Big Ten. You have Northwestern, mentioned them already. UConn is still a number one seed. So you've already played UConn as a one seed. Kansas is a one seed. You've already played them. You're going to play Purdue twice as a one seed. So that's a tough schedule, man. Those are tough opponents and Indiana has to play. On this schedule, Ohio State has dropped to an eight seed after a little bit of a tumble. Here's where Indiana sits. All right. Indiana sits as a 12 seed right now in the eastern portion of the bracket. As a 12 seed in that famous 12 5 matchup with Oklahoma, a really, really sneaky good team out of the Big 12, their last season there before they move on to the SEC. Then, if you win that game, if this were the bracket today, you would win or play the winner of Duke and Sanford. And the other teams in your portion are UConn, Norfolk State, Ohio State, and Iowa State. Get me out. Get me out of that portion of the bracket if I'm Indiana, which we are. I mean, get us out of there. I don't want to see UConn or Ohio State or Iowa State or Oklahoma or Duke. Are we serious? I don't want to see that. That's horrible. Oh, that's horrible. That is a brutal draw. Thank God it's early January, and this is not what it's going to look like come Selection Sunday. Other teams uh, that Indiana will see or has seen, um, you have just some really interesting ones here. Michigan State as an eight seed, quietly climbing up the ranks, folks. I'm telling you, Michigan State's going to bounce back and become a good basketball team. Kansas, I mentioned, they are a one seed as well. Wisconsin is down to a four seed. Uh, you'll see them very, very soon if you're Indiana. Auburn, pretty steady as a five seed right now. Uh, they've got going up against Indiana State. They would be in that Wisconsin portion of the bracket, so that would be interesting. And again, a lot of teams from the Big Ten on the bubble. So 
Not too bad, man. Not too bad. How are you feeling about Indiana as a 12 seed? Do you still think they can climb? Because I do. I, I've said I think Indiana will be a single-digit seed by the end of it. I think they can make a push for five to seven, I think, is if they win some games. They could very easily drop out of the NCAA tournament, which is kind of crazy to talk about. But that's just where this team is to start January, to start Big Ten play. It's scary, for sure. It's very scary, but you just got to win some games, man. And, and I've seen people talk about the Big Ten not being any good. I don't get where that comes from. I don't get that. You've got nine teams slated in the tournament right now. That will change. I've talked about how this conference is going to eat itself alive, but that doesn't mean it's a bad conference. Just look at the Pac-12 in football. They do it every year. They're good. They beat each other up, and then they knock themselves out until Washington comes along. And, hey, shout out to Washington. Shout out to Michael Penix Jr., too, uh, for balling it out in Washington right now, taking on Michigan in the national championship game on the football side of things. But, again, Indiana and Nebraska tonight, full recap episode late tonight after the game. Better stay up late. We'll have the YouTube video up tonight after the game. The audio will post tomorrow morning. I appreciate you making Locked on Hoosiers your first listen each and every day. Hey, back in the home setup, by the way, if you didn't see this on YouTube. Uh, sounds better, looks better. Glad to be back here uh, at home and, and doing the show from here for the foreseeable future. So if you're on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Both things are free and they help me out tremendously. If you're on any of your audio platforms, uh, you can subscribe on there. Turn on notifications across the board. We'll have reaction to Indiana, Nebraska tonight and the we'll start previewing what's a big weekend for Indiana as they'll return home for some more Big Ten play. But as always, Hoosier fans, until next time, stay safe, and I'll talk to you later.